right so first problem steel rod OC OC of diameter D and a yield strength of 356.3 megapascals is subjected to external loads as shown below so I have my external uh, point loads determine the diameter D for the rod to have a factor of safety of 2 for normal stresses caused by bending moments so specifically for just the bending moments uh, draw a shear and a bending moment underneath a uh, diagram underneath the free body uh, diagram shown below so right here and before submitting any values show the expression you found for the diameter s a function of the factor of safety n bending moment m and the strength of the material s and use i equal to whatever so there's two parts of this problem the first one is to find this this expression for d and that has nothing to do with the moments just it's just in terms of the variables so i'm going to use this space here to the right to come up with that expression and i know that my factor of safety is the strength of the material over the stress and i know that the stress is from the bending moments and i get the equation for that so that would that would be m minus my over i i also know that i is pi d to the fourth over 64 my and i know that the y is the distance from the neutral axis to where the where i'm calculating the stress in this case i want the worst the maximum stress which would be on the surface of the rod meaning the distance from the neutral axis which is the center of the rod to the surface is a radius so that's uh, a half a diameter okay so this would be a 3 over 2 and the 64 over 2 would be a 32 uh, so if i solve for d cubed i would get the 32 times m times n over pi times s meaning that what i want here is 32 m n over pi s to the one third okay that's my expression and this is like the, the most important part of this problem because it's it's what has to be with do with uh, design factors or factors of safety and and um, mechanics of materials now I need the M I have the factor of safety and the strength of the material but I don't have the maximum moment and that's what I'm gonna need to actually get a value here the maximum val moment will I can either um, find where the maximum moment would occur, occur uh, due to these loads or I can just do a bending and the shear uh, diagrams and find what the maximum moment is for those diagrams so that's what I'm gonna do next now I need the reactions I don't have R1 and R2 but I can find them if I do a sum of moments in about O or B one of these two variables are eliminated and I can find the other two so I'm gonna do a sum of moments about B because the distances would be easier so I have 1 plus 1.2 at a distance of 2.2 a force of R1 and that would be a negative moment because it would be going counterclockwise then a 1 times 3 1 times force 3 and that would be positive because it's counterclockwise and finally a 1 times 6 negative because this 6 would make this rotate clockwise equal to 0 meaning that minus 2.2 r1 is equal to 3 or r1 is equal to 3 minus 3 over 2.2 kilonewtons right and now if i do a sum of forces in the y direction i, I can solve for r2 so now I know that R1 is actually going down because it's negative. So minus 3 over 2.2 minus 3 plus R2 minus 6 equal to 0. So R2 would be equal to 9 plus 3 over 2.2 kilonewtons. Okay. So if R if R1 is actually going down and then 3 is going down and then going up at R2, I know 
and it's going up so that when I go back down six, it goes down to zero. I know that for my shear diagram, I need to be between six and R1 and plus three going down. So if I go down about one negative and then at 1.2 I go another three, additional three, I would reach some something close to minus four, right? And that way I know that the zero should be somewhere around here. Okay, so same values here, one, 2.2, 3.2 for the x, which is in meters. And my y-axis is the v, which is in kilonewtons, shear uh, loads. So what I just said is, um, I'm gonna go down r1. So I'm gonna do this in the calculator so that I know what the values are, or I'll, I'll at least uh, have an idea of where I'm drawing this. So three over 2.2 would be 1.36. So 1.36 here, go down. At 1.2, I go three more down, so 4.36. At 2.2, I go 10 point something up. And I don't care about these values because I know that this has to reach the six. So that when I get to C and I go down six, I go back to zero. Okay. And again, I don't know. I, I don't need exactly what this value is or this value is because I'm not going to use it for my, for what I'm looking for. I'm just I just need the moment. And then, for the moment diagram, again trying to be organized, I know that there are no internal or external moments here, on the rod. It's just there. It's just going to be the result of these uh, shear forces times the distances. So that means that I'm going to start my 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 moment diagram just kilonewtons times meter um, is going to start at zero. It's going to have a negative slope and then a m even steeper negative slope and then a positive slope to go back to zero. So that means that my zero on the y, that my x-axis can be drawn here. Because I'm going to start in zero and I'm going to start going down and then more down and then up back to zero. So I go down with a negative slope, then an even higher negative slope. And then from this point to the end, a positive slope that brings me back to the zero. Now, if I want this value right here, which is the maximum that I'm going to find, I can just do the integral of V. So the integral of V means the area under the curve for this section from 3.2 to 2.2x. That means that this distance is 1 times 6. This, which is that area, is 1 meter times 6 kilonewtons, or 6 kilonewton meter. And that's my maxi maximum moment here. So minus 6 kilonewton meter. Now, if it's negative, it just means that the rod is going to bend something like this. Not, not all of it, but at this point, uh, at this point, at 2.2x, I have a negative moment, so I know that it's going to be concave down. That means if I, if I go a, a radius down or a radius up, I'm going to do compression or tension. So this doesn't really matter. The, the minus here, I can keep it or don't keep it. I would just be comparing the negative m's to a negative value of the strength. Now I plug that in. So this would be... Um, minus 32 times minus 6,000 kilonewton meter times n, which is the factor of 52, over pi, and the strength is here, 356.3, 356.3 times 10 to the 6, because it's mega pascals, and that is uh, newton over so this is Newton, sorry, not a kilonewton. And this is Newton over a uh, meter squared. And then this to the one third. And that would be my D. I solve for that, the calculator, and that gives me 0 0.07 meters, which is 70 millimeters. All right, and I'm done. That would be a solution. Okay, uh, next problem. If an external torque is added to the loads on rod OC, basically the same one from before, the resulting Mohr circle 
diagram for an element found on the top of the surface at point O is shown in the back. But basically, I have, I have uh, from the bending moment, I'm going to do a small drawing here. I have OC, and they're telling me here at the top of O, I'm going to have a small element. Uh, at this point, I would have both bending, a tensile uh, normal stress from the bending, but also a shear from a torque that I'm adding in either direction. So uh, counterclockwise or clockwise, it's going to cause a shear here on the right side of that element that I have. Uh, assume the x-axis remains the same when looking at the stress element from the top. So if this is the x-axis that I was given before, uh, and I'm looking at it from the top, uh, that just means that from the top, the x-axis is still my x-axis on the, on, the, on, the, on the piece of paper. So I have this tiny element, and I'm looking at it from the top. And for that tiny element, I get this more circle. Okay. And so the questions. Uh, find the overall factor of safety if the shearing strength is 190. So I have a shearing strength of 190 and a normal strength, or our yield strength, in the normal direction of 356.3 megapascals. And it says, uh, but calculate both candidate factors. So one of them is from shearing, one, the, one of them is from the normal. So I'm going to need, I know that the first one is N1 S over sigma, and the other one is N2 S over tau. One from the shearing, one from the normal stress. This is, is going to be from the normal direction, the one that I got from the part one. And this is from the, uh, the shearing strength from the, what I just got here, 190 megapascals. Okay, so I have 356.3, again, from, from my previous problem, over the maximum sigma. So I'm going to call this sigma 1 from the Mohr circle. And then this one is 190 over tau max, again, from the Mohr circle. So I look for those two on the more, uh, from the Mohr circle. And what I find is that I have a sigma 2, sigma 1 equal to this megapascals, and a sigma 2 equal to this megapascals. Okay. And for the shear, I don't have the value for that. And I want the exact value here. I cannot just estimate it. Um, but I know that the max here is just the radius of the circle. How do I get the radius? If I have the center and sigma 1, one of the edges, if I just subtract these two values, I get the radius. So the radius would be 196.5, which is this sigma 1, minus the coordinate of the center of the circle, which is 89.1. So that's exactly what I want here. The tau max, which is the radius, is 196.5 minus 89.1, which is what I just said before. And then my sigma 1 is this value, 196.5. That first one gives me 1.813. This second one is 1.769. I write those down in my answer box, 1.8138. 0.769 doesn't matter which one is which and one or n2 you just have two different ones but the overall is obviously the smaller one i'm going to go with the smaller factor of safety to report that as your overall uh, factor of safety now i need the angle theta p so that's the angle to the principal stresses from my original um, uh, state of stresses so i know that tangent of 2 theta p, because what I'm going to get in the Mohr circle is 2 times that angle, is from my original state of stresses, x to my principal stresses. So this is 2 theta p, right? So what I know is the tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite would be the y coordinate of this uh, uh, location which is 60, and then the x component, the adjacent, would be this coordinate minus the center, right? 
this coordinate minus the coordinate of the center would give me the ad adjacent. So that's 178.2 minus 89.1. So opposite 60 over adjacent 178.2 minus 89.1. And from this tangent to the minus one of this thing, do that in the calculator. And this is 33.95 degrees. Is it positive or negative? So the angle is defined as from the original state of stresses to the principal stress. So this goes in this direction, which is counterclockwise. And the whole reason we have positives on the uh, negative x-axis is so that uh, we can keep this convention, uh, counterclockwise being positive. So that theta p, 2 theta p is 33.95, but I actually want just theta p. So this divided by 2 is 16.98 degrees. And I write that in my answer box. And then the last uh, question, this is the easy one. Uh, the torque and its direction causing the shearing stress, tau Tc over j. So if I know that tau is equal to Tc over j, and j is, I had a mistake here, uh, pi r to the fourth over two, pi r to the fourth over two, this just means uh, 32, 32 T C over pi D to the fourth. And I know that C is the distance from the center of the rod to where the maximum shearing stress is located, which is the surface from the center to the surface. That's a radius. T radius is diameter over two to the fourth this expression becomes 16 t over pi d to the third and i want to solve for t what torque is causing that stress that i already know so t is equal to tau times pi times d to the third over 16 and my shearing stress for the original state of stresses here would be the y coordinate which in this case is minus 60. So I have minus 60 megapascals to the six Newton meter squared pi. The diameter I found from the previous uh, problem, 0 0.07 meters cubed over 16. So meters to the third divided by meters squared, that's Newton meter. So the, the answer that I'm gonna get here, uh, it would be Newton meters. So I'm gonna divide this by a thousand to get kilonewton meters. And I do that in the calculator. and that gives me 4,040, so 4.04 kilonewtons. And I had a negative here, which means I have a negative here. And done. And that is the end of the quiz.